Hello everyone, welcome back to my Moon Tech Tips. Hope you guys are doing great and keeping safe in this pandemic situation. And thank you so much for your constant support. In this video, we are going to talk about Samsung Q800T soundbar, which is a 3.1.2 channel Dolby Atmos soundbar, which has potential to add two rear speakers as well, which means you can extend it up to 5.1.2 channel Dolby Atmos soundbar, which means five surround speakers, one subwoofer and two high channels which means you are not going to miss out on the surround experience as well as immersive experience because of the two dedicated high channel. In this video, we are going to analyze the soundbar in seven different categories such as items in the box, setup and wall mounting, speaker performance, supported audio formats, sound modes and features, connectivity options and as well as finally buying gate, whether the soundbar is suitable for your purpose or not. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Before that, if you guys are new to Maimon Tech Tips, please subscribe to Maimon Tech Tips for more useful tech videos like this. We post tech videos like this regularly. And thanks for your support. Before getting started, let's have a quick intro of this product. This product was launched in the year 2020, second quarter. The price of the soundbar is coming around 35,000 rupees INR. And by default, it comes with 3.1.2 channel out of the box. But you can extend it up to 5.1.2 channel by buying external rear speakers. The external rear speakers cost around 15 to 20,000 rupees. When it comes to items in the box, this soundbar has a soundbar unit which has a dedicated acquiring speakers, subwoofer, remote control with batteries, power card, and AC to DC adapter for the soundbar, HDMI cables, and wall mounting accessories. By default, this soundbar is capable to give good Dolby Atmos experience with a dedicated height channel. But most of the movies or titles we have is 5.1 so to have a good experience in 5.1 we need to buy this external rear speaker kit if you buy the external rear speaker kit you are going to get wireless receiver surround speakers power cord and rear speaker cable yes the rear speaker you don't have to attach it directly to the soundbar you can attach the rear speakers to the wireless receiver module so it will act like a wireless speakers so there is no guarantee between the soundbar main unit subwoofer or the soundbar main unit to the rear speakers. So this is a true wireless soundbar. Additional to the rear speaker kit, this soundbar has a Q-Symphony technology, which means if you have a latest Samsung TV, you can pair this soundbar with the Samsung TV with Q-Symphony, which means at the same time, both TV speaker as well as soundbar speaker will be fired and that will be in sync, which means you are going to get two additional channels. So if you have a latest model, Samsung TV which supports Q-Symphony, make sure you buy Q-Series soundbar from Samsung. Since it's a true wireless soundbar, the setup is going to be a little bit complicated. So let's dive into that. Since it's a true wireless soundbar, you have to give external power source for soundbar main unit as well as rear subwoofer. If you are additionally buying the rear speaker kit, even that need an external power source. So one major point to consider is for the soundbar, you need to get three additional power source. Since it's a true wireless soundbar, this soundbar doesn't need a connection between soundbar main unit, subwoofer and the rear speaker unit, which I have mentioned earlier. If you are planning to buy the rear speaker kit and wall mount that, make sure you have a perfect plan to hide or wall mount the rear speaker receiver kit as well. Even though the soundbar comes with an accessories to wall mount, I will suggest not to wall mount the soundbar. Because since the soundbar has a dedicated upfiring speaker, wall mounting the soundbar can cause hindrance in the upfiring speaker sound waves, which can actually impact the Dolby Atmos sound experience. I would suggest you to place the soundbar on the flat surface and there is no hindrance between the upfiring speakers and the ceiling so that you can enjoy the true Dolby Atmos. When it comes to the speaker performance, Samsung has done a really good job. As we all know, Samsung is a brand which is not going to compromise on the quality of the product. The major question everyone gonna ask is how is the voice clarity of the product. When it comes to the voice clarity, with its adaptive sound technology, the soundbar has an ability to enhance the dialogue, which means even in low volume, the dialogue clarity is going to be crystal clear. In item, if you are watching the movie with the soundbar in really less volume, trust me, the voice clarity is going to be really good. When it comes to the surround sound, by default, the Samsung soundbar not gonna give good surround sound because it doesn't come with a dedicated rear speaker. By pairing up it with a rear speaker kit, you don't have to compromise on the surround sound experience. So if you are watching movies in Netflix or Amazon Prime, you are going to get true 5.1 experience with this soundbar. This is one of the soundbar which can give both surround sound experience as well as immersive sound experience. 
On top of that, this onboard can support both Dolby Atmos as well as DTSX, which is an added advantage. If you have any doubt on the Dolby Atmos or DTSX, we have dedicatedly made a video on the sound formats. We'll give the video link in the description below as well as in the end screen. Please check that out after watching this video. When it comes to the bass performance, this soundbar has an dedicated active subwoofer, which means the subwoofer is going to be up to the mark. For bass lovers, this is going to be the treat. If you are not a bass lover, don't worry. You can adjust the subwoofer volume with the remote itself. When it comes to the audio format support, this soundbar supports Dolby Atmos in true HD format as well as Dolby Digital Plus, which means this soundbar can support Dolby Atmos via ARC as well as ER. In ER, this soundbar can get full Dolby Atmos potential, but in ARC, this soundbar can support up to limited Dolby Atmos features, which means in true HD, you will get lot of immersive sound effects, but in Dolby Digital Plus, you are going to get minimal immersive sound effects. If you have a dedicated ER port, then definitely investing on a Dolby Atmos soundbar is going to be a best buy. On top of that, this soundbar has a Dolby Digital support, which means the soundbar can support 5.1 channel in most of the DTH set of box like Tata Sky and everything. So pairing up is not a problem for the soundbar. This soundbar also supports DTS as well as DTSX. DTSX is also similar to Dolby Atmos. But in Netflix, we don't have a dedicated DTSX support. When it comes to gaming, pairing up the soundbar with an Xbox or PlayStation going to give an immersive gaming experience with its DTS support. We all know that speaker is something which is going to decide the performance of the soundbar. Also the software what's being used in the soundbar gonna impact the sound performance a lot. So let's dive into the sound modes which are being used in the soundbar and see how it's performing in different inputs and what are the output we are going to get. This is basically the overview of what the input we are passing and what is the output we are going to get from the soundbar. One good part of the soundbar is Apart from the standard mode, whatever sound signal you pass, you are going to get output from all the speakers, which is actually a good thing because not all the movies in Netflix gonna support 5.1 channel or not all the gameplay gonna support 5.1 channel. With 2.0 channel itself, we are going to get 5.1.2 channel output in the soundbar in most of the cases. This is actually going to be a great thing. For example, in the game pro mode, if you are passing 2.0 channel, we are going to get 5.1.2 channel output with the rear speaker and subwoofer kit. If you don't have the rear speakers, you are going to get 3.1.2 channel, which means three front speakers, one subwoofer, and two upfitting speakers. When it comes to the connectivity option, you can connect the soundbar in two ways one via HDMI, other via optical. For connecting the soundbar via HDMI, you can connect the external device directly into the soundbar and connect the soundbar arc back to the TV. If your TV has an ER support and Dolby Atmos, Connecting the TV's ER port to the soundbar ER port, you are going to get true Dolby Atmos sound experience. And when it comes to the connectivity option via optical, there is only one connectivity option that is directly the optical cable from the external device or connect the optical cable from the TV back to the soundbar. I will always suggest you to use HDMI ARC or ER port rather than using an optical cable to get a full immersive and surround sound experience. I hope now you guys have a clear idea of the soundbar. So now let's see the pros and cons of the soundbar. What are the points which make the soundbar as in best way and what are the points which is a drawback of the soundbar. The major advantage of the soundbar is the soundbar has Dolby Atmos as well as DTSX support. Now Netflix and other platforms are concentrating on Dolby Atmos. But down the line, maybe in 2-3 to three years, DTSX is going to be a popular option since DTSX is an open source. A lot of movie creators going to fork towards DTSX. So having Dolby Atmos and DTSX soundbar going to be a future proof solution. This soundbar has a dedicated game pro mode. As we all know, a lot of game supports DTSX. So while playing games with the DTSX sound format, game pro mode is going to be an added advantage. And this soundbar has a dedicated high channel. A lot of soundbar out in the market claims they are a Dolby Atmos soundbar but they don't have a dedicated height channels. But this soundbar has a dedicated height channel and Dolby Atmos and DTSX support. So this soundbar is going to use height channel without any compromise. The rear speaker is also going to play a major role if your content is not in Dolby Atmos or DTSX. So the legacy 5.1 channel sound is going to be also played in a much more effective way in the soundbar. When it comes to the drawback for the soundbar, the soundbar needs Three power source. Even though it's a wireless soundbar, setting up the soundbar is going to be a little bit of problem. One major problem of the soundbar is the rear speakers are sold separately for the soundbar, which means you have to spend additional fifteen to twenty thousand rupees for the rear speaker kit. So 
the overall package is going to cost around 55 to 60,000 rupees. This on bus supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, which is actually a good thing. But they should have added DTS Virtual X as well. DTS Virtual X would have been more handy if you are not having a rear speakers. If you are someone who is planning to buy a soundbar to enjoy immersive sound experience such as Dolby Atmos or DTSX without compromising on traditional surround sound experience also, then this soundbar is going to be an ultimate buy. On top of that, if you have a Samsung TV which supports Q Symphony, this soundbar is going to easily pair up with the Samsung TV via Q Symphony and going to give best in class sound experience. Still, if you have any questions regarding this soundbar, please leave a comment in the comment section below. We'll try to answer as soon as possible. If you find this video useful, please give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to my Mind Tech Tips for more useful tech videos like this. We post tech videos like this regularly. As we mentioned earlier, you can watch our video where we explain the sound formats right here. See you guys in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you so much. Stay positive.